Glad to be worshiping with you all here today. I want to welcome you to this time uh, coming from Fremont United Methodist Church on another beautiful spring day. And every day, friends, is a great day to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen. Good to be with you all today. Why don't we uh, continue our time together here uh, with, a, uh, with a word of prayer. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for calling us together wherever it is that we are today as uh, we con continue to worship you, remembering always, Lord, that, uh, that our time as the church and our time of worship is not restrained by our circumstances, but rather is defined by our relationship with you. And so it is, Lord, that uh, we gather together wherever it is that we are, you know. The church began and grew as a result of worshiping in homes. And maybe, Lord, it's a, a function of your Holy Spirit. Uh, maybe it's a, a way of revival that we have home worship. And maybe we're launching the beginnings of home churches again today. So wherever we are, Lord, we praise you and we thank you for all the ways that you bless us and we ask your Holy Spirit to guide us not only during these next few moments together, but through the course of this day and this week and our entire lives. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. It's good to be with you all uh, again here today as the calendar has turned to uh, the month of May uh, we're seeing flowers blooming and green grass, and you know, I'm thinking back, I lamented here a, a week or so ago about the fact that I woke up on a Thursday morning just uh, 10 days or so ago, and there's five inches of snow on my back deck. Well, that day hopefully is past us, and we move on. And you know, I'm thinking about that as we continue on during this uh, time in our nation and our world's history that uh, maybe we start to put a few things behind us as well and we move on. Um, and I'm not talking necessarily about gathering together in person uh, sooner than we should, although I certainly am looking forward to that. But maybe it's about the, uh, the spiritual mindset that we have where we continue to to move towards a place of the abundance that God brings us and not the limitations of our human existence. And so I appreciated very much uh, Eric's uh, opening uh, devotion and our praise band for leading us in a time of worship. Now I want to invite you to uh, join me this morning in our uh, continuing as we continue on in our worship with our call to worship from uh, the words of of the book of Psalms in Psalm 107. The words will be on the screen. I want to invite you to uh, join me uh, in them. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. And I don't know about you, but there have been uh, certainly some moments here over the last month or so where I felt uh, at times a little bit like I was one of those who were wandering in the desert wastelands. And I don't know about you all. Uh, maybe that disruption in our, in our daily lives, our daily routines, uh, really did kind of feel like that from time to time. 
But in each and every day, in each and every moment that we have all lived over this last month, continuing on today and tomorrow and forever, we're never alone. Those who call upon the name of the Lord will always have (laughs) the Lord uh, with us in every step. We don't always perceive him, I suppose, and I think that's probably true about me, and I suspect that it might be true about you as well. But that doesn't change the truth that uh, God is ever-present, and uh, we rejoice in that. Um, Appreciate what Eric, as I said, uh, appreciate what Eric had to say about cravings. Our scripture uh, message today will be kind of talking about that as well, so... I want to invite you to join me as we continue on in our study in First Peter uh, with the words on your screen, and if you have your Bible with you, we're at First Peter and chapter 1, and beginning today at uh, verse 22 and going through a few uh, verses in the second chapter. I invite you to join me, and please read these words along with me. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fail, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. And so ends our reading today, beloved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we thank you so much for this word that you give us. Oh, it is such a word of, of truth and a word of love and a word of hope. And it's a word, Lord, that uh, not only sustains and nourishes us for this day, but for days and years and eternity to come. And so, Lord, we pray that uh, your Holy Spirit will Open up our hearts and our minds and our souls and, yes, maybe even whet our appetite a little bit. And that, Lord, that uh, you would continue to nourish us. And in so doing, Lord, that we would continue to grow into your likeness. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I don't know about you all. But um, over this last month, I've been one who's experienced a a few cravings. Um, Eric mentioned uh, a like for chocolate chip cookies. I do, in fact, like chocolate chip cookies. Matter of fact, uh, there's not any cookies that I can think of that I don't like. And uh, I was uh, very blessed to receive a plate of uh, freshly baked Uh, chocolate chip cookies here a few weeks ago by uh, a a beloved family here in uh, Fremont. So that was wonderful. Uh, But you know something? I've been doing some baking myself. I I don't know about the rest of you. Have you experienced any cravings of your own during this unique time? For me, it's been baked goods. And uh, from what I can tell uh, in those few trips to the grocery store, uh, a lot of other people have had that same craving. Uh, there uh, were times when it was difficult to find a bag of flour. And uh, from what I read and what I have personally experienced, there's like a nationwide shortage of yeast available in the grocery stores. And in fact, the last few times that I went there, there was none. There was none. 
and I've contributed to it because I've baked some bread since uh, since we've been uh, locked up, and uh, frankly, it's something that I enjoy, and uh, maybe getting a little bit better at. But there's something that's very satisfying to me about not only eating stuff like that, but baking stuff like that. Um, there's something very satisfying about kneading bread dough. I don't know, maybe it's from my childhood playing with Play-Doh or something, but uh, I very much have enjoyed it, and uh, Donna and I have enjoyed uh, the bread that we've had. And that's not just me. I've come to find out that uh, uh, all of our kids are 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 doing some baking as well uh, in their homes. So, and like I say, shortage of flour and certainly of yeast um, in the grocery stores. So I guess I'm not alone in this craving that I've had. Um, how about you? Have you had any cravings over the last few weeks? Um, maybe it is just me, but I suspect that's not true. But you know, my cravings go beyond that. Um, in being separated from y'all, I have a craving to get back together with family, with my family, my, my, certainly with my wife and I have a wonderful opportunity to spend time together, but we'd love to see our kids beyond just seeing them on the computer screen. I would love to gather with y'all for worship and other times, um, I have a yearning for the family, the church family, to come back together again. To be honest with you, I, I have a craving to uh, take a vacation where we can actually go someplace and see something. You know, we uh, it's been many months since uh, last time we, we took some time off, and so uh, kind of looking forward to that. It's funny. You know, maybe as you're considering the things that that you've been craving a little bit, it's funny the uh, things, the the appetites that you can develop when you have to go without for a while. And maybe for some, some of these things, the the taste or the yearning goes away, and for other things, it kind of gets built up and. Maybe that's where I am on a few things these days. But you know, despite all of it, I'm very blessed. And I know I'm very blessed. I'm blessed by being part of uh, my family, certainly blessed <laughs> in my marriage. Um, blessed, Donna and I are both blessed by our family. I'm blessed by being a part of this family, the Cedar and Fremont family. I'm blessed beyond measure by being a part of the family of God, and uh, I hope that I don't take that for granted because that's uh, the ultimate blessing that anybody who answers the call of Jesus Christ, uh, that's the ultimate blessing that any one of us can experience. And so this uh, message uh, begins with that craving, this, this being a part of the body of Christ. As Peter writes in, the, uh, in his message or in his word today, just wanted to share a couple of verses with you. Starting at verse 22, it says, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, Love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. It is because, friends, because of the work of Christ on the cross, that when we answer his invitation to enter into a new relationship and become born again as a new creation in Christ, that we become capable of this kind of love and we experience as recipients of the ultimate love. Uh, I'm, I'm 
really struck by these words. I even underlined them on my notes here. To have sincere love for each other and to love one another deeply. Not superficially, but deeply. And it is out of that deep love that we have competing interests, this, this, this very much of a craving, a yearning for being together with people, matched with the deep love for the interests of the other that wants to help them avoid maybe this sickness that's going around. So sometimes that deep love is a little hard to do, but it is what we are called to. And so it is, Lord, that we, we, we ask God, we beg God to help us to love as he loves. Here's the truth, friends. The mark of a Christian, when you boil everything off, the true mark of a Christian is a deep and abiding love for God and for neighbor. A deep and abiding love for both God and neighbor. A love that is so deep that we're willing to give it even if it costs us something even if we don't get anything in return. It's the kind of love of Jesus, isn't it? When Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room uh, during that time what we would call the Last Supper, he said this uh, to his disciples, and it, it comes to us today. He says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. To love others as Christ loves us means being willing to give up everything for their good. And that, friends, is the love that we're called to. And, and, and the truth of the matter is this. We are wholly incapable of giving that kind of love all of our, on ourselves. And I can tell you, I'm not in my flesh able to come anywhere near giving that kind of love to anybody. But as truth of Scripture tells us, we can love because God first loved us. Now, during this week ahead, maybe during this day ahead, I suspect every single one of us is going to have an opportunity to give fully sacrificial love to somebody that God brings into our life today, this week. And left to our own devices, we're going to look inwardly to ourselves. But as disciples of Jesus Christ who are reborn, new creations in Christ with the power, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, dwelling within us, we can pick up our cross, lose our life, pick up our cross and follow Jesus by giving that same self-sacrificial love this week to somebody who needs it. Maybe it's just somebody that needs a word of encouragement you're down in the dumps because of this um, sheltering in place, this, this pandemic response. Maybe it's somebody who is sick 
has contracted it. Maybe it's somebody who is afraid they might contract it. You know, the as the uh, media and the and the information that we're going to get, I think that the number of positive cases in this county are going to continue to rise as more testing is done. And some are afraid, and some should be afraid. And all of us should be concerned. But you, friend, because the love of Jesus Christ is in you, and is capable of flowing through you, you might be in a position this week to give someone a word of encouragement. Not throwing away their fears, mind you, because they're legitimate. Not ridiculing them because of them, but to walk alongside them and love them the way Christ loves you and me. More than anything else, as Jesus says, it is by this that everyone will know that you are his disciple, by how it is you love those that he brings into your life. That's the mark of a true Christian. But our ability to do that is uh, certainly a work in progress, and I'll start with myself in that because the tug of war between the, the, the natural person and the spiritual person rages on from time to time. And uh, I have to say that there are times when the natural uh, overwhelms the spiritual because I allow it to happen. But it remains a work in progress for all of us as it picks up in our reading today at, at uh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says this, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. And if we think that we're not subject to those moments where we succumb to those things, we're kidding ourselves. Because as long as we're on this side of eternity, our human nature is uh, still going to be there. But you know, that's why we need Jesus. That's why we need the Father. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why we ask to give us our daily bread. Speaking to my craving again. As the scripture today continues, it says this. It's a, it, it frankly is a work that uh, is never something we need to do alone. Verse 2 says this. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. So that you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. This time apart is certainly put my family on my mind and while all ki- all of our kids are grown and on their own now and and uh, doing well in their chosen fields very proud of all four of them i'm still remembering back to when they were newborns and when they were hungry and they needed to be filled and you know what they did I suspect that all of you who are parents probably had the same experience. They cried out because they needed something and they needed it right now. Well, that's the encouragement that Peter gives us here today, that we are to be like newborn babies, to crave Pure spiritual milk. Have you ever tasted that the Lord is good? I have. I absolutely have. And I suspect most of us have. And so, in these moments where we start to drag or maybe we're just feeling a little empty and that 
natu natural person is starting to rear its ugly head and the spiritual one is kind of sitting on the wayside and we're starting to feel isolated and tempted and hard-pressed maybe. That's just like being a newborn child who's all of a sudden starting to experience hunger pangs. So my word of encouragement for all of us today is that when we have those moments, that's the time to say, Jesus, fill me up to crave spiritual milk to not only satisfy us in the moment and help us maybe to sleep like babies, but even more so to fill us up for the reason that Peter gave us. He says, like newborn babies, crave spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. You see, my kids and your kids and you and me and all of us who started in this world as newborn babies, I suspect that's most of us, we got fed and we continue to get fed for the purpose of growing up and growing up and growing up. And if bread, among other things, will fill us up for that purpose, imagine what crying out for the bread of life and for living water and pure spiritual milk will do for us as well. And I believe this, that as we cry out and as we are filled and as we grow, we become more and more and more and more capable of truly, truly loving others as Jesus loves us. And maybe especially so in uh, this time where we need all the nourishment that we can possibly get. So I encourage us all to cry out to Jesus to fill us with his grace, to fill us with his spirit. And another word of advice, if you're not feeling that hunger, then that is the prayer request. Ask Jesus to create in you a hunger to grow, a yearning, a craving for pure spiritual milk. And in so doing, as we ask the Lord to fill us up, we become more capable of loving God and loving our neighbor and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and living out what we talked about last week, our holy purpose of glorifying God and building his kingdom. Many weeks ago, you heard it from me that as we are filled up, it becomes more and more and more natural for us to share with others because it is out of the abundance of our heart that the mouth speaks. See, here's the truth, and I'm going to close with this. True love built the church. Jesus said to Peter, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Well, that rock is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the one who gave all in the supreme act of love that enables each and every one of us to do the same. As Jesus picked up his cross, so it is that we can pick up ours. True love built the church. 
true love through the church. And as we seek to live out our holy purpose of glorifying God and building his church, true love will continue to build his church. To God be the glory. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for the amazing ways that you love us. They are beyond our ability to humanly understand, to be sure, but it makes it no less real, Lord. And by your grace, you enable us to be able to love in the same way that you did. As a matter of fact, you testify that that is our surest way to prove that we are your disciples and you love us so much that you give us your spirit to make, us, make it even possible. So today, as we crave many things, we pray, Lord, that you would fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit, that you would anoint us with your power, with your truth, with your grace, with your love, enabling each one of us, Lord, to be able to grow. And in so doing, Lord, that your gospel would be shared with those around us. We live in the hope of Jesus Christ, but we live in a world where hope is absent at times. And as it is, Lord, we pray that you would send us to those in our lives, empowering us and emboldening us to share the word of hope with those around us. May we reflect you and your love in everything that we do, but it is only by your grace that it is possible. And so we thank you for loving us so completely. As we close this time, Lord, we share the word, the prayer that uh, you taught all of us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. just wanted to share a couple of thoughts here uh, as we end our time together. Those of you who are on the email chain, I sent out a question here this past week. It's the first of three questions, and those questions are related to God's holy purpose for us to glorify God by building his kingdom. And the question that I asked, and I'm inviting all of you who are uh, worshiping with us here today to consider your answer to this question as well. It was simply this, why Jesus? Why Jesus? Because you see, as we go to build the church, to, to live out our holy purpose of glorifying God and building his kingdom, we have to be able to answer that question because it doesn't matter what the answers to any other questions are if we don't have an answer for this one. And so I was very blessed to receive a few responses here this week. I wanted to share them with you. Uh, one person responded to the question, why Jesus, by saying, Jesus is the only way. I would hate to think what it would be like without Jesus. Amen. Somebody else uh, responded this way, looking back over their life. I know the only reason 
I was able to get through all the bad times is being in constant prayer with Jesus through my faith. Even if the answers aren't what we would like, I know I'm loved and everything will be okay if I just trust. What a deep faith that is. Somebody else went to uh, the word of truth and uh, shared this as their response. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. Still another person responded this way. A long response, a kind of of, uh, condensed it a little bit. They said, about Jesus and talking about his true humanity, his full humanity. He said, people were actually able to see, touch, and feel him here on earth. They witnessed his miracles, watched him go to the cross, witness him defeat the grave by seeing him resurrected. And we're provided with those accounts in Scripture, the eyewitness accounts, again, relaying about his full humanity and the testimony that we have received, which, by the way, what I'm sharing here is testimony as well, the testimony that we can share with others as others have shared with me. And still the last one I wanted to share today gave three simple words of why Jesus, because he lives. See, and that's the decision that each one of us, when I look back to Easter Sunday, each one of us has to make a decision. Did he or didn't he? Because if he didn't, no, there's no point to any of this. But if he did, this is the most important thing ever. And it needs to be the most important thing for each one of us. So I'm going to send out another uh, question. It'll be question number two of this series here this week. But I really want to ask all of you to continue to pondering the answer to this question. Why Jesus? Because the answer to that will inform your answer to the next question. I want to invite those who are not on our email chain to go to our website. At the top, there's a yellow button. I think it says be informed or get connected or something like that. I should have taken a look at that. To uh, sign up for our uh, email list, our communications network, our website is cedar-fremontumc.org. And if you don't remember that, you can Google it or feel free to contact any of the members because I'm sure they all have the uh, web address memorized since it's been in the book Sunday for the last five years. Uh, Feel free to ask one of them. Uh, Many thanks again to those who have uh, put together the service today, to Eric and Kale for being here with uh, doing the technical side and all who contributed during the week, our praise band among others. Uh, We'll continue to uh, provide information uh, here through the parish over the next uh, few days and weeks. Looking forward to getting back (coughs) together uh, safely with you as soon as possible, but we're going to make an informed and wise decision that uh, both honors God, loves God, and loves our neighbor as ourself, especially the most vulnerable among us. Um, Thank you again to those who are out and about uh, doing the work of the kingdom in their ministries, uh, medical and governmental, and law enforcement, among others. Um, Wash your hands. Stay uh, safe. Wear a mask when you need to. But crave spiritual milk. Cry out to Jesus and be filled. Because the work of the kingdom of God And our holy purpose of glorifying God by building that kingdom continues regardless of our circumstances. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of us to be shared with the world around us. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed week. So we're going to end our
um, time together with one song, and I think Pastor Bob talked about crying out, so I really think that this song is very appropriate, because this is a great way to start. Shout to the Lord. Sing it loud, people. Can't tell down on the sea. 